We're back in the land of handmade dinosaurs. Welcome to Holbrook, Arizona, perched just to the side of the Petrified Forest National Park, a place that's been drawing tourists out here for more than a hundred years, especially along Old Route 66. Here on the east side of town, you see this massive, wide, super long stretch of the old highway. That stretches on for miles with no stoplights. In the early days, the highway was narrow. It would go through the old downtowns. There would be a a lot of congestion, building these giant, wide, almost freeway-esque sections was the mid-century solution to that problem that eventually gave rise to the birth of the modern freeway. But that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in these, the remnants of the old mother road. This here is an abandoned and derelict Whiting Brothers gas station. Whiting Brothers was a company out of Arizona that eventually used their success with gas stations and service stations and launched a line of motels as well. One of which is just up ahead. Look at this mid-century marvel right there. This was once the Whiting Brothers Motel in town. The old paint scheme has changed quite a bit, but the cool thing is you could still see the signpost where the original neon sign was mounted. And the building itself remains largely unchanged if it's a little more flamboyant now. It's crazy the way that futuristic mid-century modern roof line, which is almost sort of futuristic googie architecture from back then, somehow weirdly fits right in with the Sahara theme. Holbrook is one of my favorite places in part because there's so many epic relics here. Some of them like the 66 Motel and Cafe may have changed cosmetically over the years, but still survived with their basic shape and names intact. Signs like this would often be upgraded throughout the 50s and 60s to draw in more modern customers, even though the motels themselves might be a little older than people would have liked. Across the highway, there's another epic mid-century building. This place was once called TP Curios. It would sell souvenirs. It's funny because it's a themed building. It's sort of a 1950s surrealist modern version of a teepee. Can you see that now? Dude, what an epic sign. There are tons of old buildings like this scattered throughout the entire town. And just as a side note, would you look at the size of that jug? It's got it. Now I started on the relatively more modern side of town for a reason, and that's because Holbrook has a very old section of town that always distracts me and sucks me in. Which is where we're heading now. Boy, I love giant things shaped like things. And there's no better example of that in Holbrook or on Route 66 anywhere else than the epic Wigwam Motel. 15 epic concrete teepees placed in a U-shape, built in or around 1950. This was the sixth of seven wigwam motels and one of only three that survived. And just one of two on Route 66. Oh, here comes the train. Dude, this place is so virtually unchanged from its heyday. Well, other than the original giant office teepee being replaced with this bigger office structure. And it's hard to believe at one point this place was virtually abandoned. Check out this June 1983 issue of Life Magazine. I just have to have with me. There's a huge spread on Route 66, and as you can see here, the wigwams were virtually abandoned, just used to house the retired owner's relatives. Fast forward 38 or 39 years to the present day, and this is one of the most popular stays on Route 66, to the point that I couldn't stay here last night because it was all booked up. Well, that's okay. We've stayed here before, and we'll do it again, too. Now, one can only hope that there's a similar revival one day for the Plainsman coffee shop, dining room, cocktail bar, and restaurant with one of the most epic neon signs ever. I am a huge fan of this thing. For some reason, I can't get enough of staring at it. And I love that the building is such a crazy combination of old west and epic mid-century modern futuristic lines. This was a popular stop for a long time and I can see inside a couple of old booths and tables and ashtrays. I'm sure it looks nothing quite like its former glory back in this old postcard photo here, which look at that, that's amazing. This is the kind of place I'd love permission to go inside and buy whatever's left, you know? You'll see across the highway all around me there are epic old school motels, some still functioning. And of course, there's never enough time to see them all. We've got time for a few. This building here that is now the Route 66 self storage was at one time the Western Motel. Look at it there in the 1950s. And then going back even farther, you can see that the building changed a lot over the years. And now this place is almost completely unrecognizable. All that's left is that small portion of the old office, which really doesn't show any trace of its old Western architecture. However, across the road, the butter 
Fairfield Steakhouse, which I saw customers entering last night, is still Old West to the max. Look at this place. You got the stagecoach entrance right here. You got the wooden sidewalk. Check out those mid-century lighting fixtures right there. And then the grand finale, hand-painted murals. Dude, I love hand-painted stuff. <laughs> Across Route 66 from here, what is now the Economy Inn, was another Whiting Brothers motel. Oh yeah, there were two of them. As you can see maybe from the one-story wings on either side, this one started life much differently than the bigger one they built later that we looked at earlier. It started out pretty old-fashioned, but as you see, they added on a lot over the years. And it's amazing that that still exists. So many people used to cruise through town on Route 66 that there are billions of motels, it feels like. Some of them, sadly, are in such bad shape, I can't believe they're still standing. Like what is now the Roseway Inn, but used to be the very popular Highway House. Dude, look at that epic neon sign. Hard to believe that it actually changed over the years and evolved into this gargantuan arrow. And it is a real bummer that that sign is gone, but even more of a bummer that the coffee's gone now. I could share you some coffee. So could this place by the looks of it. It doesn't make me too sad though, because as I've seen many times, it is never too late. A point proven by places like Brad's Desert Inn here. Lovingly restored, freshly painted. Look at all those hand-painted signs. Places like this, where the old becomes new again, are what keep Route 66 alive. Dude, how sick is that office sign? I want it. I have not yet had the pleasure of staying here, but since adventurers are welcome, I really plan on doing that in the future. Ah, see, I love hand-painted stuff because it's truly one of a kind. Anyway, as usual, I have taken up a lot of time in Holbrook with this history stuff. Probably time to move into the old downtown where Route 66 makes a sharp turn to the north right there. Where it meets up with Arizona Highway 77, US 180. This is sort of the heart of old Holbrook. Check this out if we back up and step into the very busy highway very carefully. You can almost perfectly get a glimpse of how today's very busy intersection blends into its former self back in the past. Dude, look at that. We are now standing under the awning of what you saw in that picture was the Campbell's Coffee House. This is clearly a building that needs a lot of attention. It's actually the second location, which I'll get to in a, in a minute. Although the inside peering through the window looks pretty darn derelict now. This was a very popular coffee shop on what was maybe the most important corner in town. Across the road in that photo, you'll see the gas station, which is no longer there. It's now been replaced by a part. And over here, the Holbrook Mercantile Company today was once the Cadwell Drugs and Soda Fountain. It's very different looking today, but you can see it's retained its distinctive shape. Although it lost that amazing awning covering the sidewalk, when as often happened, the highway was widened. If you spotted it in that old 1930s photograph, the original location of the Campbell's Coffee House was right next door, part of this complex here. And there was, of course, a Babbitt Brothers mercantile store. Roughly where Pat's House of Originals is today, I think. Those Babbitt brothers dominated northern Arizona in terms of merchandise back in the old western days. Incidentally, at this park on the corner that you saw used to be an old gas station, almost every weekday night, in the summer anyways, they have Native American dance groups, sometimes Spanish dance groups, which I've come out here for the last two nights in a row and watched, and they are fantastic and free. So definitely, definitely don't miss out on that. Here's a popular spot I don't think I've ever mentioned before, but I'm always in the neighborhood. Joe and Aggie's Cafe. It's a Route 66 icon, although I've personally never eaten here. And this new place, Romo's across the street, is supposed to be very good as well. This town has so many amazing old hand-painted murals and old buildings. Kind of place that makes me want to be a billionaire so I could buy all of them, put new businesses in them, try to revitalize things. Oh, before we leave this corner completely, I want to show you my favorite shot of it, which was taken from the air, I think. Or, well, at least the roof of this gas station. Check that out. You could see the old cafe across the street with the mobile gas station. You could see that there was a standard oil station on the spot we're standing on. Incredible. And check out that camel sign. Now, all of this is pretty much right next door to the famous and straight up iconic Rainbow Rock Shop, where we've been many times before. I've bought a lot of petrified wood for people over the years from this place. I mean, it doesn't get more classic roadside Americana than this. You know, a dinosaur eating a snake made by hand out of concrete. Plus, I mean, look at all the hand painted stuff. Everything from the murals up there, these big signs, the little ones. And speaking of dinosaurs, right next door is an A&W. Pretty old school, but if you want to get really old school, you got to keep going and cross the railroad tracks. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Now we've been over to this side of the tracks before and I'm sure we'll come again. There are just too many epic stories from this one little patch of ground. Not to mention this, one of the most famous saloons in all of the Old West. The Cottage Saloon, or as it was known locally, the Bucket of Blood. The name came from a very specific incident. There was a huge gunfight in here and it looked like someone had just spilled buckets of blood all over the floor. There are now many other tourist-oriented saloons located all across the United States and Canada that claim the name, but this supposedly was the original. Now, as you see, it's in need of a little help, a little preservation work. It's been a while since the last round where they had to shore up the building with these metal poles, but luckily it's still standing for the moment. Again. Another reason I wish I was a billionaire. It was a famous watering hole for the hash knife outfit. Those were the cowboys who worked for the massive Aztec land and cattle company. They were known as the thievingest, cussingest, fightingest, self-described wildest cowboys on earth. And even when the massive hash knife ranches were being broken up, this whole region was still full of uh, unsavory outlaw types. Something partially solved by the man who opened a drugstore right here in this building, Frank Watron, who would go on to become a deputy sheriff and famously send out cordial invitations to uh, somebody's hanging. Sort of pixelated, but you could see his Drugstore right next to the old bucket of blood, and then you got all these other buildings here. Oh, you know what? There's the drugstore right there, and there's old Frankie himself. You see that? You are hereby cordially invited to attend the hanging of one George Smiley murderer. This was in response to a new rule where the uh, sheriffs had to invite other law enforcement agents to come witness various hangings, make sure they were all on the level, as it were. He actually took a lot of criticism for that one. Newspapers and various other people said that, you know, this is a human being, you know, you gotta be humane about these things. So he sent out a second invitation, apologizing and inviting people to the rescheduled hanging, this time of a human being uh, in a most humane way and all that kind of stuff. It's a long story, which I hope to have more time to tell next time I come through town. Unfortunately, though, at the moment, I think that's just about all the time we have. Because today, I'm hoping to get to New Mexico. A couple more stops in town though, real quick. First, I can never and no one should ever stop through Holbrook without visiting the old Navajo County Courthouse. It's got the most epic museum inside. It's got the old original jail in it they used all the way up until the 1970s. The cool thing was you didn't need any toilet paper because once you used the bathroom, you could just turn on the shower and be clean. And also other stuff, lots of other stuff. Like the old school original courtroom. Dude, some really controversial stuff went down in here. Order in the court. Ooh, I'll have a gluten-free cheeseburger and some jalapeno poppers. Silence, fool. You better get out of here before they find me in contempt. Wow, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? They've got a lot of old school hash knife stuff in here, including actually an original actual hash knife. Basically, there's enough stuff in here that you could spend the entire day, and I have. Just looking and looking, but not today. I wanted to make another stop, but I'm just plumb out of time. I've gotta get all the way to the New Mexico border, and believe me, it's a ways. They look close together on a map, but it's a, it's a good stretch as far as driving is concerned. Uh oh train. Holy cow. You can't even see. Dude, that was like total whiteout. I had to pull over for a second just to let some of it pass. Now though, the problem is everybody else is whited out behind me. Hopefully they don't smack into the back of me, but it's all right. I'm just gonna chill out a second before I try to rejoin the herd. Woo! There we go. That's much better now. At least I can see the road. I don't know, it's getting a little hydroplaney. Yeah. Yeah, this is like driving through a freaking river. I've driven through a lot of storms in my time. Usually in a taller vehicle, you know, like a tour van or something like that. It's a little easier. You can see a lot farther. Alright, okay, it's clearing up now. It's getting a lot better. Woo! There were some noises coming from underneath the car. Like that. <laughs> That's just the sound of water. Like a giant super soaker spraying you from underneath. Or like when you pull into a, a car wash as the underspray. Anyway, what I learned over the years though is all storms have an ending. Keep going. You core punch. Eventually, we'll pop out the other side. Oh boy, how I missed that. All those years of driving through summer storms when I was in a van. Whew. Ah, I just had to pull over and smell that stormy air, dude. And what a great place to pull over. The old 
Fort Courage. I don't know how many of you are familiar these days with the show F Troop. Was it the F Troop or F Troop? But Fort Courage here is themed after that show. Ooh, lightning out there. And uh, it was a popular stop along the highway, especially since where we are now, we're just inside the Navajo Nation. So kids that grew up in the 60s and 70s watching F Troop, not to mention countless other old Western TV shows, were over the moon to stop and have their parents gas up at the quote unquote real Fort Courage. Dude, look at that, that chair has been there for a while. I like the droids, this place is for sale if you want them. Oh wow, look at that. Somebody lost a moccasin out here. It's a real shame that this place is closed. We used to stop here back in the day with a van. Would have never thought the old Taco Bell Express would look like this ancient ruin. Over the years since it's been defunct and abandoned on and off, I've stopped here at different times, sometimes only to be chased off. It seems like it's been well and truly abandoned now and they're looking for a new owner. So if you're looking to start a business, this might be the one for you. Now this uh, sort of I don't know what you call it, the gun tower of the fort here, the, uh, the lookout tower up there. That must have been so awesome to climb up inside for those kids back in the day. See, the last time I tried to peek inside the walls like this, I got yelled at and scolded. I hate getting scolded. As you can see, look at this. It was a massive place. There were a lot of different buildings out here. A lot going on. That's the old trading post. And it only made sense that they would yell at you and try and chase you off while they were trying to, uh, probably trying to rehab this whole area. And that's because look at that burned down building over there. Places like this get vandalized heavily by locals and visitors alike. Which leads to their eventual closure and destruction. It's cool that there's at least this much of it still standing. Especially this, the old Hogan here, which is a Diné or Navajo traditional structure. Speaking of Navajo, that reminds me, I got places to be. We gotta push on. All right, we've made it. We're finally in. New Mexico. The signs may have changed over the years, but it's still thrilling to come across that state line and watch the way the landscape instantly changes. It's gorgeous out here, and for generations, the coolest and best place to stop right on the state line was this, the Chief Yellow Horse Trading Post. Unfortunately, just like the last time I came through, it's closed. I hope my friend Scott is all right. I haven't seen him in a long time. It was his dad, Chief Yellow Horse himself, who purchased this property from Harry Indian Miller, a sort of famous Route 66 legend, created this fantastic roadside stop, complete with a buffalo back there. You could see the buffalo, an old fort, some imitation cliff dwellings, although they have found actual uh, Anasazi pottery out here, or ancestral Puebloan pottery, I believe. So although the dwellings may have been fake, there actually were people living here hundreds and maybe even a thousand years ago. It was ago. a thrill of my life when Scott, a long time ago, dug up these old hand-painted Route 66 signs from the heyday of the Chief Yellow Horse Trading Post. One of which he actually gave to me. I've still got it in my garage. I look at it every day. It's one of my most prized possessions. So since I've been making some handmade Route 66 signs, I thought I would leave one here for Scott. Maybe I'll put a pin on top of it and leave it next to the gate. Hopefully he'll know who it's from. There we go, there's no mailbox, so I had to get creative. Left a note in the sign, in the bag, so hopefully he gets it. It looks like the property is still in great shape. I hope it's not permanently closed. I know it's hard to keep this one open because it's so far from the interstate exit. But both for its historical value, and also because he's a swell guy. For me, nothing will ever beat the chief. Although there are a lot of other Yellow Horse family owned places back there. All right, and now it's time to make our final drive and head down old Route 66 to Gallup. All right, we made it to Gallup with a little daylight to spare for once. And this part I've been looking forward to not only the entire drive from Anaheim, but for more than a year. I'm checking back in to the Hotel El Rancho. This is one of the most epic historic hotels on Route 66, certainly in this part of New Mexico. I went over it in a lot of detail last time we were here, but just to refresh you a little. It was built in 1936 by D.W. Griffith, the famous film director's brother. And from the very beginning, catered to movie stars who would visit the area, not just because they were traveling up and down Route 66, as you would do back in the day, but also because they needed somewhere to stay in the area while filming old classic Western movies. So you're in Gallup, New Mexico. You're already surrounded by Navajo, Hopi, Zuni, Land, real life cattle ranches and cowboys. I mean, you were in the Old West. Whatever they ended up building here was already gonna be authentically Old West. But if you're gonna have an Old West hotel for movie stars, you've gotta take it to the next 
level. Welcome back, my friends. Holy cow. Literally. Dude, look at this epic freaking place. Last time I stayed here was mostly completely by chance. My true destination then was to visit Chaco Canyon. So I had to leave the El Rancho at like four or five in the morning, something like that. I didn't get to soak it in nearly as much as I wanted to. That's why I'm very happy to return. And this time, I'm gonna enjoy myself. It was in this very lobby the last time I was here, upstairs on this balcony, that I saw someone. I definitely saw someone. The question is whether or not it was a ghost. But I'll wait till nighttime to tell you the ghost stories. For now, in the spirit of splurging and enjoying myself up here, I spent an extra $20. Yes, that's all it cost for some reason. To get a much bigger room than last time. Matthew Comfort would approve. Many of the rooms here are themed, or at least named after, movie stars who stayed in the hotel. Jimmy Stewart, Fred McMurray, my favorite Disney character, Catherine Hepburn, Dale Robertson, storage. Last time I was here, I didn't really know the ropes, you know? So I stayed in the corner in this room, the Rosalinda Russell room, which was nice, but a bit small. So the extra 20 bucks this time was meant to be for a bigger room. What I did not know, however, until I got the key and came up here, is that the extra 20 bucks got me not just the Gene Autry room, but also a connected bridal suite. Dude. Look at the size of this room! Holy guacamole, look at that. It's the bridal bed! It's like I'm having a honeymoon with myself! Oh, there he is, that old-fashioned singing cowboy, Gene Autry, right on the wall. You'll have to forgive all this stuff. This is my stuff, I brought this up a little while ago. This is incredible, it's already twice the size of the last room I stayed out here. And look at this luxurious old-school bathroom, plenty of mirrors there. Not that I want to look at myself, I think I do that enough. Nice little writing desk, maybe I can work on my novel. But the best part is, check it out. This suite expands, dude. Look at all of this. There's a microwave and a sink. I got Ajax in here. A little dining area, oven, fridge. What the heck, is that a blender? Ooh, I can make smoothies. Plenty of closet space. I mean, there's a whole cornucopia of bonus features in here. Get to check it out. It just keeps going. Look at this. There's room for the whole fam. This is where that other door that actually says bridal suite leads. There's two additional beds in here, a nice old school couch. At first I thought this was the honeymoon suite and I was thinking, yeah, the Lucille Ball honeymoon suite. Look at these two beds. But the really bonkers part is, check this out. There's an epic balcony. It leads right out to the front of the hotel. I think it also connects to a next door room where they're doing a little bit of work but dude check this out and there's this weird catwalk which i'm pretty sure i'm not allowed to walk on but there's no sign or anything leading around the corner of the roof and then down to who knows where oh and that is not all on the other side I'll just make sure i lock that there's another doorway to another balcony actually rather than going out this way you know what that balcony wraps around the whole back of the building it connects to another door in this room. Leading outside, but not really, to a whole crazy private covered porch. Since both of these rooms are connected, nobody else can get to this one but me. Look at that open windows. You can see the pool, which has been unused for a while. Whoa, dog. Some more chairs, a table. And views not only of the back of the classic original El Rancho Hotel, but the later motel addition in the parking lot too. Dude, this is awesome. In fact, there's so many windows. I could basically look out on three sides. Oh, look at those chumps in the Best Western. They don't even know what they're missing. Maybe I shouldn't even mention this because prices change all the time, but all of this was less than 140 bucks, which is far less than the Holiday Inn Express in Gallup is tonight, or comparable hotels. Even the Best Western costs more than this. And like I said, this was $20 more than the last room I stayed in, which was pretty small. This is a whole adventure of a room in here. And yes, I'm totally jumping on that bed. But before I do anything else, I gotta wipe the cowboy grease off myself and change my clothes. I'm still a little moist from that storm and the desert out there. And anyway, the El Rancho looks even better at night. Plus, it's a far better atmosphere then to tell you the ghost story I've got. So begging your pardon, but we'll be back momentarily.
Door doesn't shut all the way. Gag does <laughs> gag doesn't work. Ooh, I don't know if you can tell. But this has a whole different vibe at night. All of a sudden all these doors and windows uh have a whole different feel. I'm suddenly aware that there are a lot of entrances and exits to this suite here. But check that out. Look at all the neon coming through. Wow! All right. Yeah, it's just now hitting me that there are whew, a lot of closets. Way too many closets. Look at this. Next to the bed, you've got a closet to stare at at night. Why does it have a lock? Oh, where the heck does that go? Okay, that's... What is that? You can't even get in there all the way. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is genuinely terrifying. Like a horror movie, and I now wish that I did not know what was in here. Oh, dude, I wonder why that huge closet is blocked off like that, and why do they have this interior locking thing? That freaks me out. <laughs> and I'm gonna sleep next to it. Awesome! We got another closet here by the bathroom. That's a normal closet, not a scary closet. Another closet next to the main front door. Whoa, with another light. Look at that. It smells like painted here, like no one's ever been. Oh, nice, with the uh, attic access. Wait a minute, this hotel has a third floor. So, oh no, 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 not this wing though. <sighs> For a second I thought, is there another room up there? Okay, that's weird. Jeez, how long were people staying in the honeymoon suite back in the day? Holy cow, that's three closets just in this room. And you got the balcony doors, which are a little weird. Then you got the kitchen closet. And then in this extremely scary room. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, that's better. No closets, actually. Nope. No closet at all. So that room has three, two of which are gigantic. And this room has none. Just this doorway here, this uh, weird balcony that shares a doorway with another room, and has that strange walkway, which I figured out actually goes all the way downstairs like a fire escape, so people could climb up theoretically and look in on uh, how things are going. It's still awesome, it's just I'm painfully aware that I'm all by myself now. And with that in mind, and in that spirit, let's go out and I'll tell you how I think I saw a ghost. Oh no, but seriously. This gets a lot, uh, a lot uh, spookier at night. All right, so the last time I was here, I was staying at the end of the hall like I showed you before. And in the morning, like four or five in the morning, it's super dark, it's snowing outside. I'm grabbing all my stuff. I'm carrying it by hand to go down the stairs out of the car. Coming this way, I get to this window. I look through and there's a guy reading a newspaper in that chair right there. I look directly at him because I'm thinking, oh, he's gonna see me carrying all this stuff, kind of awkward, you know, think I'm silly. I might go from there to here and turn left. No one was there. Now, I'm not a crazy person. I know there's a chair there. There's pictures of heads above the chair. It was five o'clock in the morning and I had been waking up several times in the night by hearing my own name, which is probably, you know, me dreaming that, obviously. But the thing was, through that window, I looked at this person reading a newspaper, older guy, beard, no old-fashioned clothes or anything, just a normal dude. But there was no time or place for him to escape from up here. If he had gone down the stairs, I would have heard him. And then I asked the very different-looking guy that was down in the lobby, was there anyone up and around? And he said, no, just me. Now later, some members of the Ortega family who own this place told me they think They've got a relative who haunts this place, and there are numerous other ghost stories. I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, you know, especially not the TV show version of ghosts. But uh, I gotta say, that was weird, coupled with seeing weird stuff in the hallway, the name three times in the night waking me all the way up, like as if someone had called me. That could be dreaming, I get it. This could be a trick of the imagination, five in the morning. I accept that there can be, probably are, and almost definitely are, reasonable explanations for each one of the things. I accept that. But I'd be lying. If I didn't tell you, you totally gave me the willies. And now that I'm back looking at it and I had all that time to be like, ah, it was probably nothing. Especially now that it's night again, it's creeping me out. It's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a, uh, one of a kind, very unusual place. All right, more pleasant thoughts now, more pleasant thoughts. 
Look at how gorgeous this place is. It's only about 10 o'clock, so it's not too late yet. Just like I showed you last time, look at all these signed photos of movie stars who stayed here over the years. I've been a lot of places, but there is no other place, as far as I know, quite like the El Rancho. Oh, and as long as we're still awake, it just occurred to me, we might as well step down into the lobby. Which, by the way, in case you missed the last time we stayed here, is freaking epic. It's so richly detailed. The custom furniture, the authentic western movie props, antiques of every kind, including the old antique cigarette machine. Every part of this place is fantastic. I saw this cute little older lady weaving this earlier in here. It's amazing. There's so much in here. We could, and I have, spent hours going over every nook and cranny, and I'd still find more. Well, I guess the coolest part, for the purposes of this visit anyway, or at least uh, one of the cool parts that we should definitely take a look at right now, is the unbelievable epic outdoor neon. Dude, that is amazing. Check it out. It's even got a flickering letter right now. The ancient hotel. It keeps switching from hotel to motel occasionally because of the added wing to the side over here. And yes, if you watched my last visit, I did show the neon at night, but back then it was freezing, literally below freezing out here, so I was not enjoying it this much. Unlike last time where we got snow, this time we're getting rain. It's just starting to sprinkle now. I know there's a storm coming in. But after a long, hot day, oh, it feels great outside. Now, in between daytime and nighttime, when you didn't see me, because I actually met up with a friend who's also staying at this hotel tonight with his wife in a much less scary room, I gotta say. And I gotta tell you, the Hotel El Rancho is a really cool place to go into the restaurant or hang out in the lobby with friends. I don't often have time, much less anything else, to do that on these types of trips. That was pretty fun. I've also stayed here, of course, all by myself. And either way you slice it. Hey, there's my room. Either way you slice it, the El Rancho is epic. 10 out of 10 would do and did do again. Oh boy, you can really see right into my room there. I might need to close the curtains. All right, I guess that's enough procrastinating. Time to head back inside, eat something, figure out what in the world I'm gonna do tomorrow, and at least attempt to get some shut eye. Huh, that's weird. I must have forgot to shut the door all the way. Hello? Okay, all good. Okay, let's just uh, latch that. All good, make a little grub, and then bed. All right, time for some canned chili. What in the world? Hang on, I just remembered two peepholes. There's nobody. Dude. Darn kids. It's happened to me in hotels before. People knock on the door and then they run away. <laughs> Hilarious. don't like that. Back to my chili. Ah. Who's knocking on the other? See, there is a bar here. It is about the time people are evacuating the bar, so hopefully the pranks stop. All right, well, either way, it's time to take a bath, and you guys can't follow me for that, so I will see you in a little bit. All right, 
well, I got the TV on. It's muted, but at least it'll give me a little light in here. Still kind of weird sleeping with that kitchen door cracked open like that, but it doesn't close all the way. But in the meantime, I'm showered, I've scrubbed, I've shaved. Got the TV on a timer so it'll turn itself off. Time to get a little bit of shout out. Hotel and sleep well. What the heck? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. What is happening? Oh, no, 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 no. Not into it. Not into it. Not into it. I must be dreaming. Oh, what is it? No, no, no. Why is the closet? Oh, abandoned room. Abandoned room. Oh, 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 oh thank goodness. Wait a minute. What is that? Is that a death note? Don't do this, Julio. Put the pencil down. Wait, Julio, stop! Anything you want, just name it. That's it? That's all you want? Oh, you got it, buddy. You got it. All you had to do was call, man. You scared me half to death. Oh, this is such a relief. You had me worried. I'm glad we can finally hotel and sleep well. Dude, I thought you were a ghost making all those noises. What? That wasn't you? But then, that means... All those years, blah, 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 all those beers. There's a huge spread on Route 66, and as you can see here, the wigwams were virtually abandoned, just used to house the retired owner's relatives. Be back, momentarily. Door doesn't shut all the way. Gag does, gag doesn't work. Jokes in land, so begging your pardon, but we'll be back, momentarily. Locked in there for a second. Dude, double door trouble. Double trouble! Dude, this is incredible. One of the most iconic movies of all time. And here's the filming location right off Route 66, 10, 15 minutes from downtown Gallup. 